And a huge welcome to the show to the new super welterweight champ, Julian Williams. Uh, Julian, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Do you feel like Andy Ruiz owes you a drink now for taking the Upset of the Year award away from you? <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I'm happy for Andy Ruiz, man. He had a, uh, he was a bigger underdog than I was, and he shocked the world, man. It's just a, I'm, I, I'm, I'm glad he got the experience to feel I felt. Probably even on a bigger stage. Probably even more because it was a bigger stage. Right. How has life changed for you since that moment, since you became a champ? I just a little more busy, you know. I'm, I'm pretty. I, I like to think of myself as a, a simple person, you know. I still spend a lot of time with my family, and, uh, you know. So I just a little, a little more interviews. That's it. <laughs> hey, Jay, Rock, Gabner Mars here. Um, question. Uh, what was How the game feeling? plan going in, and did you watch our demo <laughs> that Sean and I did? <laughs> uh, the game plan going in was to win. However, I, how, however, I had to. Uh, mm -hmm. I did watch you guys' demo, and I didn't take anything from the demo oh. that you guys took. <laughs> it was terrible. No, I, I was kind of oh, right. No. I, I did say you had to get them early rounds, <laughs> hey, which you did. J Rock, oh, I, I know you and your and What's your up? coach, Brad Man Edwards. You guys are really studious in the game of boxing. When you studied mm -hmm. Jared Hurd, what did you see in his game that you could expose? Well, I don't want to dig in too much into what I've seen because we might have to do a rematch at some point in time. But I do. I will say that he has a lot of deficiencies and holes in his game that I notice not just when I watch tape, but I notice I notice these holes when I seen him fight, you know, for the first time, which was a couple of years ago. I think he's a really good fighter, but not to take nothing away from him, just skill was not his strong point. His strong point is his mentality and what he has on the inside. Was there a particular point within that fight where you thought? I can win this. I've, I've got this fight in my grasp. I thought that when I signed the contract. Let me ask you this, Jay, <clears throat> Jay Rock. Do you do you guys count the rounds? Like you coming back to the corner, you're like, we got that, we got that round, we got that round. We Absolutely. Know. Yeah, so Absolutely. at that point, you know what I mean, were, were you guys like, when were you just feeling comfortable, like, you know, this is it? Well, you can never feel too comfortable when you're in a guy's hometown. You don't, mm -hmm. don't want to just do enough. I wanted to go out there and dominate him for 12 rounds you clean. You did. You know, I thought I did that. I thought I did that, but <sighs> I'm not criticizing judges, but um, two judges gave, gave him five rounds. Mm -hmm. I watched the fight about two or three times. I couldn't, five, five, I couldn't find five rounds to give to Jared Hurt. That's just my personal opinion. Maybe I'm a little bit biased because it's me. I don't think I am. I know that you were expected to fight the winner of the Tony mm -hmm. Harrison, uh, Jamel Charlo fight uh, rematch. Tony has had to pull out because of an ankle injury. Mm -hmm. He's had surgery today. Uh, Jorge Cota has then replaced mm -hmm. Harrison. What does that mean for, for your future? Absolutely nothing. You know, uh, the show goes on, you know. Uh, it would have been great if I could have uh, unified with the... Uh, with the winner of that fight, because I probably, <clears throat> excuse me, after I would have won that fight, I probably would have been fighter of the year. And that's a, a dream of mine. You know, it's funny because me and my coach was just, we was at the BWAA Awards, and they had a booklet of uh, fighters that was fighter of the year from like 1930 up to up till today. And every fighter from 1980s, from the 1980s, that won fighter of the year is a Hall of Famer, except maybe two, and they're borderline. I think one of those two were, were Glenn Johnson and Vernon Forrest, I, I believe. Uh -huh. And uh, so being a fighter of the year is a big deal to me because accor according to the list, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be a, a future Hall of Famer. So that would have been a big deal, but I'll get it. You know, mm -hmm. it's just a little more patience, you know? Jay rock I saw you in New York and I, I walked up to you. I asked you, uh, do you want a rematch? That was a great fight. Do you want a rematch? I'll please tell everyone that's watching the show right now what you said to me when I asked you if you wanted a rematch? You know what? I don't even remember what I said. Uh, you, I'm, 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 I'm going to remind you. Whatever I said, I meant it. I'm remind you. I know whatever, you meant it. Whatever I, I said, meant I meant it. it. You, said, you said it don't matter. You remember? Oh, yeah. It don't, it don't, it don't matter, you know, because I feel as though, like, uh, anybody can make adjustments, but I can make adjustments, too. We could fight 10 times. I'm going to beat him 10 times. That's, that's what you said. No disrespect to Jared Hurd, but that's how I feel. Yeah. I mean, I, right, I, mean, we'll that, I, I didn't even know I said that, but that's how I feel. All of us yeah. fighters are. You know, we'll fight anyone. He's got that mentality. Right. But in the back of right, your head, sure. you, you must want that rematch, you know, against your, your only defeat, Jamal Charlo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, I think that's a big fight, but I got a lot of business to clear down here in uh, 154 pounds. And when I clear the division out 
and it's going to make for a much bigger fight. And he's not going nowhere. He's 160 pounds. I don't think he's moving no time soon. I'm busting out of 154, so I probably got about a few more fights here. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then uh, we got to say we, we both were Al Heyman. You know, we both were Fox and Showtime. So, you know, it's going to happen, you know. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he, you know, he, he, he wouldn't mind uh, stepping back in with me again. I think in the moment when you became champion and that spotlight was really strongly on you, you came out with some really important messaging. One was about, uh, you know, mm-hmm. not dismissing fighters who take an L. The other one uh, <clears throat> was also really interesting. We want to pull up a tweet that, that you uh, put out there not long after becoming champion. You said this, just a friendly reminder for my future opponents, I will be requesting at least 90 days random blood testing by VADA. Mm-hmm. Won't be cycling off me now. Now we're going to find out who's really the best in the 154-pound division. Uh, The big question, I think, was that directed at somebody particularly? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I think a lot of people want me to... I'm going to just put it on the table. A lot of of people want me to say that the Charlo twins are juicing. And I have some reporters that that try to get me to say it, and I won't say it because I have no definitive proof. So I would never accused anybody of cheating if I don't have definitive proof. But what I will say there, what I will say is there, that, that, that there's a lot of uh, cheats in boxing. And if whoever want to fight Julian Williams, don't call Al Heyman, call <laughs> Vada and get signed up for testing. <laughs> <laughs> Julian, we appreciate your time as always. Thank you very much. Good to see yeah. you. Thank you guys. Likewise. Thank you for watching. Well, if you enjoyed that clip, make sure you click uh, somewhere around here and subscribe from Fight Highlights to exclusive interviews. We have got everything you need as a boxing fan right here on PBC on Fox.